The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Myers, Book 2, Scarlet, Chapter 21. I'm so sorry if I interrupted you, Wren said, lingering beneath the forest canopy. The scent was simply too enticing to pass up. His eyes were on Wolf as he said this, and the twinkling behind them made Scarlet toes curl in her shoes. Grasping the handle of her pistol, she dragged it, in, dragged it toward her hip. Of course, Wolf said after a long silence, his voice dark with warning. We have plenty. Thank you, friend. The man walked around the fire, passing so close to Scarlet that she had to shrink away from, to keep her elbow from brushing his leg. The hair stood up on her forearms. Rand sprawled out opposite the fire from her, lounging at, as if the shore was his own private beach. After a moment, Wolf settled down between them, not lounging. Wolf, this is Rand, said Scarlet, flushing from the awkwardness. I met him on the train. Wishing she could restructure her emotions into nonchalance, she busied her hands with turning the duck pieces. Wolf inched closer to her, keeping himself as a block between her and Ran, even though his face was tinged red from being so close to the flames. We had a lovely conversation in the dining car, said Ran. About what was it? Righteous lupin, lipin wannabes? Scarlet glared at him. A topic that never ceases to fascinate me, she said, Tone even as she pulled the duck wing and legs out of the pit. These are done. She took a drumstick for herself and handed the other to Wolf. Rand didn't complain about the two bony wings, and Scarlet grimaced when he pulled the first apart, cartilage popping joints, popping loudly at the joints. Bon appetit, said Rand, picking, up, picking at the meat with his eerily sharp nose, juices dripping down his arms. Scarlet nibbled at the meat, while her two companions attacked their shares like animals, each keeping a weary eye on the other. She leaned forward. So, Rand, how do you get away from the train? Rain tossed the clinging bones of one wing into the lake. I might ask you the same. She pretended that her heart was pulsating erratically. We jumped. Risky, said Rand with a smirk. Wolf bristled. The relaxation that had graced his features before was gone, replaced by the simmering tam temper Scarlet had seen at the street fights, the tapping fingers, the jousting foot. We're still a long way from Paris, said Rand, ignoring Scarlet's question. How unfortunate this turn of events has been for the plague victims, of course. Scarlet adjusted the breast meat. It's awful. I'm grateful that Wolf was with me, or I'll probably still be stuck there. Wolf, said Rand, and not seeing it very carefully. What an unusual name. Did your parents give it to you? Doesn't matter, said Wolf, tossing away his bone. I'm only making conversation. I prefer silence, Wolf said, a growl in his tone. After a moment in which the, the distrust was palpable between them, Ren faked a gasp. I'm so sorry, he said, picking the last bit of meat from the bones. Have I stumbled upon a honeymoon? What a lucky man you are. His face taunted as he pushed the shredded meat into his mouth. Wolf curled his fingers into the sand. Squinting at the man through the haze of smoke and heat, Scarlet leaned forward. Is it my imagination, or do you two know each other? Neither denied it. Wolf's focus was pinned to Rand, a twitch away from attacking him. Suspicion rolled. Suspicion sliced through Scarlet. Thoughts as she gripped the gun. Roll up your sleeve. I beg your pardon? said Rand, licking the juices as they dripped down his wrist. Clamoring to her feet, she leveled the barrel at him. Now! He hesitated only a moment, expressions unreadable. He reached for his left wrist and rolled the sleeve past his elbow. LSOP 1126 was tattooed across the muscle of his forearm. Anger bowled up inside Scarlet, every bit as hot as the coals beneath the fire. Why didn't you tell me he was one of them? She hissed without taking her focus. Or the gun off the tattoo. For the first time, Rand's composure stiffened. I was hoping to determine why he's here and why he'd approached you on the train without alarming you, said Wolf. Scarlet, this is Rand Kelsey, a loyal soldier of the Order of the Pack. Don't worry, he is only an Omega. Rand's nose wrinkled at that. What Scarlet could tell had been a low, low insult. She swapped her attention between the two. You could smell him on me, she said, when I came back to the car. You knew, and you knew he was following us all the time. How? 
She gaped at Wolf, the unnatural eyes, the uncanny senses, the teeth, the howls, the idea that he'd never had a tomato before. Who are you people? Hurt flinched across the wolf's face, but it was Rand who spoke. What exactly have you told her, brother? Wolf stood, forcing Rand to tilt back his head to hold his stare. She knows I'm no longer a brother to you, he said, and she knows that no one without Mark can be trusted. Rand smiled at the irony. Is that all? I know you have my grandmother, she yelled, startling the flock of swallows out of the nearest trees. Once their flapping had gone quiet, the woods settled into a thick hush. Scarlet words so ringing. Her hand started to shake as she forced it to be still. The rain continued to spit, to sit sprawled and at ease on the shore. You have my grandmother, she said more slowly this time, don't you? Well, not with me. White sparks flashed across Scarlet's vision, and it took all her willpower not to pull the trigger and erase his smugness. Why are you following us? She said with a throbbing rage that had become a manageable simmer. She could see him calculating his responses, planting his palms on the rocky shore. Rand pe pushed himself to standing and brushed the dirt from his hands. I've been sent to retrieve my brother, he said as casually as if he'd been sent to the store for milk and bread. Perhaps he did not tell you that he and I are part of an elite pack given a special assignment. That assignment has been canceled and Master Jowl wants us to return. All of us. Scarlet's stomach tightened as Rand's meaningful look, but Wolf's expression was filled with more distrust and shadows than it ever been. I'm not coming back, he said. Jowl no longer controls me. Rand sniffed. I doubt that. And you know as well as anyone that we don't allow our brothers to leave us. He rolled his sleeve over, down over the tattoo. Though I confess, I haven't missed having one less alpha around. The wind shifted, sending sparks from the fire into Scarlet's face, and she stumbled back, blinking them away. Did you really think it was wise to come here, without Jowl, to protect you? Said Wolf. I don't need Jowl's protection. That will be a first. With a snarl, Rand leaped forward, but Wolf danced out of his reach and retaliated with the fist aimed at Rand's jaw. Rand blocked, gasping, Wolf's fist, grasping Wolf's fist and using the momentum to spin Wolf around and lock elbows around Wolf's neck. Wolf reached back, grasped Rand's shoulders, and flipped Rand over his head. Rand landed with a solid grunt, his feet smacking the water. He was up again in a blink. Scarlet's hands trembled, the gun danced between the two, her pulse galloping. Rand was shaking with smaller rage, while Wolf was carved from rock, shrewd and calculating. I really do think it's time for you to return, brother, Ren said through clenched teeth. Wolf shook his head, damp spikes of hair flopping into his forehead. You never were a match for me. I think you'll find me somewhat improved, Alpha. Wolf snorted, and Scarlet sensed he didn't believe Ren could ever be a genuine opponent. Is this why you followed us? You saw your chance to improve your rank? To defeat me away from the pack? I told you I'm here. Jowl sent for you. The assignment is canceled. When he finds out about this rebellion of yours. Wolf launched at Rand, knocking him onto his back. Rand's head landed in the water, and Scarlet heard a sickening crunch as it collided with the hard stones beneath the surface. She screamed and ran towards him, digging her nails into Wolf's arms. No, stop! He might be able to tell us something. Wolf's sharp canine was bared as he pulled a fist back and landed a punch in Rand's face. Wolf, stop it! My grandmother, he knows about... Wolf, let him go. When he didn't relent, Scarlet fired a warning shot into the air. The echo filled the clearing, but Wolf was unfazed. Rand's arms started failing, slipping weakly down the wolf's forearms and dropping into the water. You're going to kill him, she shrieked. Wolf, Wolf. As the last burst of bubbles rose from Rand's mouth, Scarlet stepped back, let out her breath, and pulled the trigger again. Wolf hissed and fell onto his side. He clasped his hand over his left arm, where blood was already seen, seeping into the cloth of his sleeve. But it wasn't a deep wound. The bullet had barely grazed him. He blinked the scarlet. Did you shoot me? You didn't leave me much choice. With ringing ears, Scarlet fell to her knees and heaved Ran up by his shoulders, leaning back down at an awkward angle on the shore. He rolled him to his, his side, left eyes already swollen shut, and water-drawn blood dripping from down his nose and jaw. With a rattling cough, more blood and water spilled out of his mouth, puddling onto the sand. Releasing a strangled breath, Scarlet glanced back up at Wolf. He hadn't moved, but his expression had shed the 
medical anger for something akin to a moderation. When you greeted me with a gun on your doorstep, he said, it's nice to know you meant it. Scarlet growled at him. Honestly, Wolf, what were you thinking? He could tell us something. He could help get my grandma back. His wolf's, his half smile softened, and for a moment he looked sorry for her. He won't talk. How do you know? I know. That's not a good enough answer. Watch your gun. What? She dropped her gaze to the shore beside her. Just in time to see Rand wrap his finger around the gun's handle. She grasped the barrel and snatched it away from him. And as also Chuckle brought more brittle spit, bloody spittle, to Rand's lips. I will kill you one day, brother, if Jal doesn't first. Stop provoking him, Scarlet yelled, climbing to her feet. Out of Rand's reach, she reset the safety and shoved the gun back into her waist of, of her jeans. You're not exactly in any position to be making threats right now anyways. Rand said nothing. His eyes had closed, his lips left hanging open with a smear of blood on his cheek. Taking his slow, rattling breaths. Disgusted, she turned back to Wolf, watched as he peeled his hand away from his wound, and stared with surprise at the blood clotting his palm, coating his palm. He leaned over on his elbow, switched his hand around the water to get the stain off. With a sigh, she scrambled to her forgotten bag, pulled out a small first aid kit. Wolf didn't argue as she ripped open the tear in his sleeve, caused by the bullet, and took over the job of washing and bandaging the wound. The bullet had just gazed his bicep. I'm sorry I shot you, she said, but you were going to kill him. I still might, Wolf said, watching her hands. She shook her head, taping off the bandages. He's not your real brother, is he? That's just a gang thing, isn't it? Wolf grunted, said nothing. Wolf? I never said we got along. Scarlet peered up at the wild content filling Wolf's face, his green eyes burning, staring at Ren's prone body behind her. Good. The ferocity in her voice startled away some of his hatred, and Wolf turned his attention back to her. You must know his weakness. You know how best to question him. That sympathetic look again. We're trying to withstand questioning. He won't help us. But he already gave us some information. Packing up the remains of the kit, she tossed it to her bag. It missed the opening and slid down to the ground. He obviously knew something when I asked about my grandma. And then his assignment that was canceled. What's that about? Does it have something to do with her? Wolf shook his head, but she detected a clouding in his eye. He told us what he wanted us, me, to know or to believe. I wouldn't put stock in any of it. How can you be sure? His fingers started up again. Clinch, release, clinch. I know Rand. He would do anything to improve his standing by tracking me down and forcing me to return or even showing proof that he fought me and won. He hoped to do just that. As for the assignment I've been part of when I left, they wouldn't cancel it. it. It was too important for them. What about my grandmother? He shook off a troubled frown. Right. We should keep moving. He tested the, he tested the strength in his injured arm before using it to push himself to his feet. The fire had burned down to smoldering coals, and soon he had stamped them out, ignoring the duck breast that had shriveled up into a chunk of coal. That's not what I meant says Scarlet, trying to put on the shore. Shouldn't we at least try to question him? Scarlet, listen to me. Does he know something that would help? Yes, probably. But he won't give it to us, unless you plan on torturing it out of him. And even then, there's nothing you could do that wouldn't would frighten him more than that the pack will do if he talks. We already know where your grandmother is. Dealing with him is a waste of time. What if we brought him with us and offered him as a trade? So he suggested watching his wolf reload their bag. Wolf laughed. A trade for an Omega? He gestured at Rim. He's worth nothing. Though his temper could be heard just beneath the surface, Scarlet was glad that the temporary insanity was gone from his eyes. He'll go back to them, she said, and tell them you're with me. Doesn't matter. Slinging the pack over his shoulder, Wolf spread, spared a final scornful look at his brother. We'll get there before he does.